Hello everyone, welcome back to This Book Belongs To, Pam. Today we are going to be talking about my best and worst books of 2023. Okay, I know I'm late. I know it's March and um, everyone has already done their best books and worst books of last year. But I still want to make sure that I film this so that I have sort of a record and I can look back and see what my thoughts were on the books that I've read. Now let's actually go through my least favorite books of 2023. I'm only going to be mentioning three, um, the ones that I rated two stars for last year, just because I don't want this video to be filled with books that I don't like. I want to focus more on my best book. So, so I actually don't know how I would rank these three books. I think I'm going to talk through it and then I'll give you my ranking. But one of my least favorite books for last year is Charm Offensive by Alison Cochran. I know that this is actually a well-loved book in the book community, which this might be an unpopular take, um, but I really did not like it. I really, I, I was really annoyed when I was reading this book. I think, trying to remember now what I said in my wrap up, but it's really mostly because of one, the premise, it's fine. I really like the storybook setting where they're in this castle reality TV show type of thing. Um, but the thing that irked me the most about this one is the way that representation of different, um, I guess, identities have been presented um i don't know i just felt like it was a book where it was trying to tick off as many rap boxes as it could like you have gay people lesbian people bisexual trans gender fluid it felt like the book was just trying to okay how many of these representations can i include in this book to make sure that it's super duper inclusive which like on the surface it doesn't feel that bad like it feels like oh it's nice that the author is trying to include as many you know, people as possible, but the way that it's written in the book doesn't feel very genuine. It feels slightly performative. I just felt like the characters who embody these identities were not developed in any way, shape, or form. So it felt like they were just there to be the diversity character. And it's not just one character, it's a lot of characters. Like suddenly you find out that this character is this gender or this character has this sexual identity just because. Um, I know that you don't need a reason to like put a character specific identities in your book, but I feel like you still have to toe the line between being performative and being very genuine. And for me, this book um, like lean towards a performative side of things. Um, so yeah, that is mostly why I had the ick while I was reading this book. Like it wasn't a good read for me. Um, but overall, it's like very cheesy. It's your typical popcorn romance book. Um, I would still suggest for you to read this if you enjoy very lighthearted, fast-paced book between, I believe, um, this is between a gay person and bisexual person. This is just my opinion, so maybe it, it doesn't come off that way to other people. But yeah, that is A Charm Offensive by Alison Cochran. The next book that I'm going to be mentioning is one of the most boring books that I've read for the entire year. Like, the entire time that I was reading this book, I was falling asleep. I was fighting with my eyelids, trying to, like, keep them up and open. Every time I read this book, I just... I just doze off because it was that boring. And that is none other than City of Ashes by Miss Cassandra Clare. I have been trying to dip my toes into the Shadow Hunter universe um, last year, and I did read the three books in the first half of the Mortal Instruments series. And this by far was the most boring out of all of them. I think the first book was also a bit boring, but it had the excitement of being the first book in the series. So I was still trying to figure things out, getting to know the characters. Now this next book is just, it is so dry. I had no feelings. I wasn't invested in any of the characters. Clary is so annoying as always. And I just find that because obviously this is YA and it's written many, many years ago, like a little under 20 years ago. So I know that, you know, the styles and like tastes of people have changed, but this was just very 
very dry for me. It was also very episodic. Like, they need to do one thing, and then after they do that, they need to do the next thing, and then the next thing, and then the next thing, until they get to the final boss kind of scene. Um, which is typical of YA, but the way that this was written was just so boring. Like, I really did not care. There were a lot of, like, expositions, lots of info dumpy stuff, and it was just not fun for me to read. I really had a hard time reading this book so yeah i don't really have much to say about this except that i am still gonna be reading through the shadow hunter chronicles i'm still pushing through the next book that i'm gonna be reading here is the infernal devices series so that excites me because that's everyone's favorite it seems so yeah that is city of ashes by cassandra claire and finally the last book in this list is the fine print by lauren asher this is the first book in the dreamland billionaire series and i did not like this at all it it's not i think i didn't like it because i felt like there was no real tension between the two leads like i felt like everything that they needed to create that tension was always fixed immediately and also i just find them both quite corny, like quite cringy. Romance book characters are almost always a little bit cringy. I feel like that comes with the territory of like the romance genre. Um, but these two characters are just so incredibly cringy to me. Like the way that they express themselves, the way that they have sex, is everything is just so corny. And I just, that's the best word that I can use to describe this book. It's just so corny the writing wasn't that good there weren't like lines that i was like fawning over the banter between the character was just dry i still have not continued with the series i don't know if i will i think people are saying that it gets better like i think the second book is better but maybe i'll give it a try but as of right now i have no plans of reading this series and anything by lauren asher and that's it those are my least favorite books of 2023 and finally, we're here at my list of best books of 2023. I am roughly putting this in order, although honestly, all of these or most of these are five star books. So I picked this from my list of five star and 4.75 star books um, just because I don't have enough five stars. <laughs> I'm not committed to this ranking, but this is just loosely how I would rank them, I guess, right now like my emotions right now coming in at number 10 is the hunger games by suzanne collins so this is the first book in the hunger games trilogy and i read it for the first time last year when i did the hunger games read along with pam from pam shenanigans i was really pleasantly surprised by this book i have always heard this book as the quintessential dystopian ya novel and it honestly lived up to that hype to that title because it did such a great job at building this dystopian world that is very much rooted in reality and like real things that we are experiencing even right now. And the characters are f very fleshed out. The relationships and dynamics between the characters are well explored. And honestly, the only reason why this is probably at the last like spot on my list and the reason why I gave it 4.75 stars is that it is YA and I'm not the demographic and maybe if I read this when I was the demographic I would have given it a resounding five stars the way that the story progressed was a little bit like episodic for me which is fine but sometimes it feels very linear especially in a world as rich as the Hunger Games I'm not here to criticize the Hunger Games because it is truly a really good book and I definitely recommend this if you are looking for a dystopian novel that is very very accessible very easy to read but still very impactful and it has very dark themes explored in a very accessible and non-gratuitous way i think the hunger games is a good place for you to start it really does a great job at exploring the human connections the human experience and and what happens to people when they are pushed to the edge so yeah that is the hunger games by suzanne collins definitely an a plus book the next book in this list is the invisible life of Addie larue by v.e schwab now i read this last year as part of my reading like jan agaran video and i really really enjoyed it i really loved it so much i gave this 4.75 stars um but as you can see i tapped it a lot this book does a great job at exploring 
loneliness and exploring what it means to be remembered, exploring what it means to leave a lasting impression, a legacy, if you will. And I just find that the way that V.E. Schwab tackled this very existentialist concept was like really smart like I like how she did the whole back and forth between the past Addy and the present Addy and how things that happened in the past still happen in the present and why is my camera battery Mm, hold on let me just finish this train of thought the only thing with this book is that it is very very slow moving and I think that's by design I appreciated the slowness of the beginning of the book because it gave a lot of weight a lot of emphasis on that single moment when finally this thing happened to Addie something that hasn't happened to her for centuries but that does mean that the first hundred pages of the book is quite hard to get through I think this is the kind of book that you don't binge read it's the kind of book where you just read it a little bit at a time it's V. Schwab is so good at piecing together words and phrases that just make you feel things the way that V. Schwab describes emotions places the experience of being in places like I've never been to New York and I've never wanted to go to New York really but the way that V. Schwab talks about New York really makes me want to like just go there and like she's just really good at romanticizing life such a stunning skill to have and I saw it in full display in this book so I still very much recommend it just be aware that it is slow moving at the beginning and it will be worth it I promise you it will be worth it I definitely cried with this book um but yeah if you want to see my full thoughts while I was reading it check out that um reading vlog that I did where I read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Now, the next book in this list, no one is more surprised than me, (laughs) but the next book that I'm going to be talking about is none other than Check and Mate by Ali Hazelwood. Now, I know, ranking this above Addie LaRue and The Hunger Games is a very potentially questionable choice, (laughs) but I think it just boils down to circumstance. When you read the book, what the book made you feel at the time, And that's just the beauty of reading books. Now, this is just me trying to make sure I don't get roasted for putting this above those two books. But yeah, I read Check and Mate and I absolutely loved it. This is, I think, Ali Hazelwood's YA debut. And I'm thinking about why I really enjoy it right now. But I think it's really just because I find that the focus of this book is more on the relationship between the two characters, main characters, and the, I guess, the setting, which is chess, rather than the smut, because that is what Ali Hazelwood's books are known for. It's the smut. Her adult books just really focus a lot on finding ways to create moments that will give you smut. But for this one, it really wasn't like that. It was all about the not-so-meet-cute that they have and the way that they progress through their relationship and through the struggles that the main character is having um, and the way that their relationship grew it just gave me a lot more butterflies just because it focused on the experiences that i have rather than whether they're horny for each other or not um i don't know i just really found myself enjoying my experience while reading this book a lot so i think if you have not liked ali hazelwood's adult books especially because of the smut it can be quite awkward and her smut is not like the best in the world um she has some very very interesting choices when it comes to dirty talk um so if you are turned off by that try this one try Ali Hazelwood's YA novel because I think if you just want those you know feelings of butterflies and like kicking your feet kind of thing check and mate might be a good place for you to start so yeah, that is the eighth book in this list. The next book is kind of a cop-out because it is technically a series that I want to put in here, which is the Aurelian Cycle. So you have um, Fireborn, Flamefall, and Fury Song. But the book that I gave five stars to is Fury Song, which is the last book in the series. And that is quite surprising for me because normally the last book has a lot to live up to. It has a lot of work to do, um, which often means that it can be quite unsatisfying, slightly disappointing, um, just because you've been waiting for the finale for X number of books, and that's just a big cross to bear. 
So I am surprised that I really, really enjoyed the last book of the Aurelian Cycle. I think in general, this series is really good in terms of um, creating this fantastical world. But rather than hinging on the fantasy aspects of the world, it really just was a setting to support all of the very interesting plot things that are happening. Like the political intrigue on this is top-notch like it reminded me of my feelings while i was reading the Greenbone saga which is still my number one favorite series as of now plus they're like dragons and stuff so it's a very cool setting but it didn't succumb to just um the tropes of that setting and i think um the last book was such a good wrap-up like i did not see where anything was going i think it was written well that i didn't get tired of all of the battle scenes but all of the twists and turns that each character took and the way that each characters developed the way that each character was fully realized by the end of the series was so satisfying and i think that ultimately what led to me putting it in the five star category rather than something lower so yeah i highly recommend the series if you enjoyed the green bone saga if you want a dragon fantasy book with a little bit of romance but it's still primarily a fantasy book with interesting plots and political intrigue i recommend this series the aurelian cycle and definitely the finale did not disappoint and that is something that you could look forward to while reading it now the next book that i'm going to be talking about came as a surprise to me and that is kings of the wild by nicholas ames i read this book as part of the aurelium readathon magical readathon um i needed to read a book with a shield on the cover and luckily pam from pam shenanigans had this and she let me borrow it so i can read it i still have not returned it sorry um but i keep forgetting whenever we meet up but i am gonna return it at some point i really enjoyed this book i was really surprised because i don't think i've ever read anything that is set in the medieval ages like you know with like mercenaries and stuff like that. i probably have but I don't really remember off the top of my head. Like, it seems like it would be, like, a super serious book. Like, if you look at... Sorry, there's, like, a glare in it. But if you look at the cover, it feels super male. Serious, high fantasy kind of book. But it really was not that. It was definitely also high fantasy. Um, but it didn't really focus on the fantasy aspect of the book. It focused on the characters, the band of brothers that you are going to be following. And their different personalities and how they interact. Every single character here was so funny in their own way. And when you put them all together, it's just chaos. And also, <laughs> if you didn't know what this book was about, you are following like a band of like a mercenary group. And they're like badasses in their prime. They're like old now. They're out of shape. But then they have to like get back together and do this one last mission. It's so funny because... Obviously, I'm getting older and I can relate and they, like, feel the aches and pains of their battle scenes when in their, like, young days they would just blaze through the battle and then the next day they would feel fine. But this one, their bones were aching, their joints were, like, inflamed and, I don't know, I just found that so funny. It just made me laugh out loud so much and I find that the plot itself isn't really the point. It's super easy to follow. It's very unserious. And that is what I really enjoyed about it. And I did not expect to laugh so much with this book, but I actually did. So I highly recommend this one if you want to dip your toes into this kind of fantasy where it's like very medieval, but you're afraid like me, you were intimidated like me. This is a really good place to start. And plus points, the map, you know how fantasy books always have maps, but sometimes it doesn't really add to your experience. The map in this book, I reference it a lot i really enjoyed reading kings of the wild by nicholas ames the next book in this list i don't actually have a physical copy of and that is the wicked deep by shay earnshaw i read this as part of vampathon and i really liked it a lot like i was looking for a witchy book and boy did this deliver it felt very well-rounded to me like it was a book about you know, this witchy thing that's happened in this town um, and this curse that is put on the residents of this town. It had that 
obviously, but at the same time, it also had a little bit of romance in there, a lot of mystery, and like very thrilling. And I was like on the edge of my seat the entire time. I was trying to guess what's going on and guess who's who. And I just found that it kept me engaged from start to finish. I even cried at the end. But yeah, I just found this book to be like a perfect witchy book. I recommend this book if you are looking for a solid standalone novel that has witchy themes but isn't like imprisoned in that kind of like magical aspect. Like it's it doesn't feel too magic if you get my drift. It has witchy themes but it's really a mystery novel at its core that's how i would describe it i just find that the way that the plot progressed had me at the edge of my seat really enjoyed that experience and yeah that is the weekend deep by shay earnshaw we are now entering the cream of the crop the top of the list these are the four books that i think if you ask me what were the best books that i've read in 2023 these are the four books that i will remember off the top of my head First one that I'm going to be mentioning is a very, very short book, but made such a huge impact on me, and that is What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. Look at how thin this book is. So this is, I guess, an expansion, if you will, a retelling, an expansion of Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher. So it just explores this eerie, gothic mansion, and the brother and sister that lives in it and just this very weird thing that is going on i'm not well read in the genre this book i think is one of the best horror books that i've read this su did such a great job at unsettling me at creating this eerie atmosphere that feels believable which makes it more scary um also this cover a plus cover i really really love this cover and at this short amount of pages, it did such a great job at building up this main character that we are following, developing him, developing the world that we are living in this book. Um, obviously, it's a retelling, so she had a lot of help from the source material, but I have never read the source material. So I found that even knowing nothing about the source material, I was transported into this very eerie world that um, she has written. And also the plot itself, it it was well paced. I find like it had me gripping the book because or my Kindle because I read it my Kindle, but I was like really worried for our characters, and I found that the reveals and the twists and turns happen at such like great moments in the book, and I didn't find anything to be rushed. I didn't find anything to be too slow. I just I was just lost in this book. I pretty much read it in almost one sitting just because I couldn't put it down. And the writing is also very good. It's very beautiful and it's it was really good at creating that gothic atmosphere and it was also very straight to the point. Like I think that takes a lot of skill just you know not padding the book with so much words just to describe something but just going like straight to the heart of things but still making it sound beautiful sound lyrical and that is what P. Kingfisher did with What Moves the Dead. I have the second book with me as well and I can't wait to read it this year potentially but yeah top four What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. Now, the next three books, I had a really hard time trying to um, rank them just because a lot of them like found me at different, I guess, points in time. And I, I really enjoyed every single one of them. But I think I'm going to put at number three, The Secret History by Donna Tartt. It took me a while to get through this book, which is why I'm putting it at number three because it is a difficult book to read at first. Now everyone and their mothers know what the secret history is um and i think it gets a lot of bad rap for being a very pretentious book but at the same time that is 100 percent the point of the book that is like embedded into the plot into the characters into the very i guess message of the book i really enjoyed my time with this book even though it took me a while um it didn't exactly take me a year like i put it down and then i pick it back up like months later once i really got into it i flew through the pages it's not the most accessible writing to be honest with you it does take a lot of patience 
Um, sometimes it feels like you don't understand anything that um, Dorotar is saying, but if you just give it some love, give it some effort, it really shines. It's an amazing book, and I think the characters are all well-developed. All of their motivations and why they did the things that they did made sense. I also love that the entire book is written through the perspective of a character who really went through it. <laughs> like, this character initially like was not part of the world that the secret history is set in he worked so hard to get into this world because he had this illusion he romanticized it a lot and once he got in it he realized and discovered through long time and hundreds of pages that things are not what they seem and at the end of it, he's just like regretting his time there. I found that the journey that he took is so gripping, so interesting. And the ways that he talks about this experience vary greatly from the beginning of the book towards the end of the book. And I don't know, it was just such a journey. And honestly, this book is so funny. Like, I don't hear it mentioned a lot, but the humor in this book, like the dark humor in this book is just top notch. And I was giggling a couple of times. I keep putting it down because it's heavy. But I kept giggling a couple of times while I was reading it. And honestly, this is a book that I will definitely reread. I did tab it a lot and I'm excited to see what my tabs were if, when I reread it. So yeah, that is The Secret History by Donna Tart. Second to the last book on this list, my number two for 2023 is none other than Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. I really love this book so much. I really love my time reading this book. The characters here are some of my favorites. The male lead, Shane Hall, you... And the female lead as well, like how strong she is and how... Like, she isn't just a strong woman, she's also, like, very vulnerable, and, like, the combination just gives you a very well-rounded woman that, that you can relate to, but at the same time, you aspire to be like her. It has layers. Like, the story, the plot, the backstories, layers upon layers. This is such a breath of fresh air from all of the romance books that I've been reading just because it wasn't really just focused on this singular experience that they're having but really them as people their lives their motivations um why they do the things that they do as well as what's like important for them in the grand scheme of things and how together they can conquer those things and work towards those things I think this is like the epitome of like a really good adult romance book where it's not adult because of like there's so much smut but it's adult because it really approaches relationships in a very mature way and very healthy way as well and oh my god obviously it had tropes and stuff but i didn't find it to, to be like a stereotypical romance book and that really stood out to me and the writing is just so good the banter between the characters and the way that they clap back <laughs> to each other is immaculate. So, Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. Highly recommend this if you want, like, a more mature take on romance book. So, yeah. Seven Days in June, Tia Williams. When I was putting together this list, it was very easy for me to pinpoint the best book that I've read. Immediately, I knew once I read this book that this is going to be the best book for 2023 and it is none other than a dowry of blood by sd gibson <sighs> this book has weight like this book when i read it like it changed my brain chemistry if you will i'm being very dramatic but really this book had me by the throat like when i was reading it first of all it's vampires okay but at the same time it like that doesn't matter the point of them being vampires doesn't really change anything it's really more of a vehicle for us to explore living what happens when you feel like you have all the time in the world what happens when you feel locked and stuck into this lifestyle into this small world because obviously not like vampires are like not the norm in this world but yeah, I just, oh, it's so good. And the writing is so decadent. And I had so many goosebumps when I was reading this book. I read this as part of reading like Jan Agaton as well, because that is her favorite book. And 
I think you would if you watch that video, you would see me like gush and really viscerally react to certain parts of the book. It was just written so well. I feel like every single sentence in this book had something to prove. It had weight. It had impact. And I find that it's quite a short book. I think it's under 300 pages. And I think that's a mark of good writing, similar to um, What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher, where it really did the job with the least amount of pages. Like, it had a point, and it really delivered. And I don't know, I just, I really love this book. I highly recommend this if you want to read a book about vulnerability, about healing, and about the exploration of grief and pain especially as a woman um i think this is a master class in exposing the ways in which women have been silenced women have been gaslit and how women have been set aside because of men who think that they are the most important thing in the world and that they think they're superior and this is such a love letter to those women who were hurt, who were kicked, but then they fought back. Um, I, oh, this is such a good book. Oh, and also this copy is the Fairy Loot Edition. It's so, so pretty. Um, but yeah, that is my best book of 2023, A Dowry of Blood by S.D. Gibson. I am going to link all of the monthly wrap-ups where I talked about these books be just because that has my more in the moment right after reading the book thoughts um right now i'm just like reminiscing on my experience of reading the book and i'm not really trying to be overly critical and just i just want to like share with you this list and you know see if this book might be something that you want to pick up this year and i try my best to say who i would recommend the book to and it's something i want to try to do more of in my wrap-ups just you know rather than telling you the exact plot but just telling you if you might be the person who would enjoy this book so yeah if you ask me what my favorite book was last year i have my answer and that is a diary of blood and i'm very very happy about that and yeah thank you again for joining me for this video where i just gushed about all of my favorite books and i can't wait for another year of hopefully good reads and i will see you in the next one what was your favorite book of 2023 let me know in the comments below see ya bye